What up, y'all? Rap Critic here. And this was a request by B. Angelo. And if you want to make movie review or music live stream requests, as well as private reviews of your own indie rap joints, hit up that Kofi link below, where you can request what you like from the different tiers or just donate what you like because you enjoyed the show. Either way is much appreciated. And hey, by the time you see this episode go live, the next episode will already be available for patrons. So if you want to see it early, head on over to patreon.com slash rapcritic and get access to that, plus exclusive episodes of my movie podcast and the Patreon RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. And uh, I, I got two Nicki Minaj requests back back to back so I, I we're, we're doing a Nicki Minaj review trilogy now I, I guess starting with Barbie Dreams which since it's essentially a gender flipped remake of Dreams by Biggie Smalls I figured it was only appropriate to compare it to the original for this episode with the Biggie version being a raunchy song about the R&B singers he thinks are hot while Nicki raps about the modern male rappers that she likes sprinkled with references to things associated with them so look at that your boy's giving you two reviews for one I'm feeling generous you know what I'm saying and if you're feeling generous too you know you, you can always hit up that Patreon below you know I'm just saying there's some cool stuff that's on there is all I'm just saying so let's look at them side by side and see how they measure up. Now, off the bat, I'll say I I've never considered the original Dreams to be in the upper echelon of Big's catalog. Uh, particularly beat-wise, it's always felt a little bare-bones and underwhelming with just one hanging guitar riff in there. I feel like maybe I've been tainted by the infinite amount of freestyles I've heard over this beat, but to me it feels like it just fits better as a track for Rap City Basement Sessions than its originally sampled context. And the thing is, for Nikki's version, she doesn't change it at all. As I sit back, relax, take my blunt, sit back. It's virtually the exact same beat, save for like a couple of bass boosted kicks at that drum fill part, but that's about it. Hell, I thought it was supposed to be a mixtape track till I saw it. I had an official music video for it. And I mean, I guess a lot of shit feels a little low rent about this whole production. Like, the album this is from is called Queen, and this is how this video starts? Dude, the puppet is barely in the shot of your poor excuse for a Muppet Show parody. Point the camera lower, man! Now, I understand the original as well as the remake is meant to be taken as a novelty song, but, like, come on, let's put some effort in here. For real, look at some of these rapper puppets and tell me how many you think they got accurate. I tried to fuck 50 for a powerful hour. Is that supposed to be 50 Cent? I'm, I'm not seeing the resemblance here. Meek still be in my DMs, I be having a double. Dude, that is not what Meek Mill looks like. They didn't even get his facial hair right. And the one with the logo on it? Who's that supposed to be imitating? That's just some generic looking puppet. What, was there really a rapper known for having the word logo on their shirt? Maybe it's a weirdly cutting commentary on the fact that mainstream rappers are essentially the race car drivers of music with how many brands they advertise? But that seems a little too antagonistic for a song like this. Now, Nicki comes out the gate with some pretty solid references. I'm looking for a nigga to get some babies. A handful of Weezy, sprinkle a day piece. Like, okay, that, that's a pretty good starter guy to bring up, I can't front. Not only was Dave East the kind of guy underground enough to get cool points for name dropping him, he, he's also a dude who clearly, clearly should have been a model instead of an underground rapper. God, I, I feel insecure just looking at this dude. I, I feel like I gotta improve my life or at least do some push-ups or something. Meanwhile, the first R&B singer Biggie brings up is... Think about the sexy singers that I want to sex. I'm probably going to jail for fucking Patty LaBelle. Patty LaBelle? In 1994, you're making a song about the hot women in the R&B scene and the first name you thought of was freaking 60-year-old Patti LaBelle? And why did he say it in that context? I'm probably going to jail for fucking Patti LaBelle. Like, I, I don't think they put people in jail for old lady fetishes. And that's not the last R&B star from a previous decade that he brings up. Smack Tina Turner, get the flashbacks to Ike. Because 90s shock rap, so you know he had to bring it up in relation to domestic violence. It especially feels like a cheap gag line when I figured the point of the song is that he's talking about contemporary singers. At least when Nicki brings up old school guys, she makes it clear that they were high school crushes. I remember when I used to have a crush on Special Ed. That's right, kids. There was a rapper in the early 90s named Special Ed. And yes, that name definitely sounded as awkward then as it does now. You might remember him from a recent Worst Lyrics episode where he played a secret agent who threw an exploding message at his girlfriend. What a guy. Like Mike Tyson, he was biting my shit. Uh, okay, w w were we still doing Mike Tyson biting jokes in 2019? He's not even a rapper, so w what the hell's the point of shoehorning in such a dated reference in the first place? Okay, well, that, that definitely updates things a bit. Now, Biggie does have a couple lines that make callbacks to stuff the singer did. But honestly, most are just kind of general sex lines that could have really been about anybody. Meanwhile, I gotta say, Nikki actually gets in some real jabs on this joint to the rappers that she mentions. 
Like, that alone was worth the price of admission, especially since this came right on the heels of Khaled doing that one interview where he bragged about being such a boss that he didn't need to go down on his wife. He said like, you don't go down. Yeah. Nah, never. All of that to say you don't go down? Come Khaled, on. You don't eat the box? Nah. Come on. So, uh, that was a certified... <laughs> moment when this song dropped oh no and this was another one oh who could forget the time black twitter had a field day with bow wow's dumbass acting like he was getting on a private jet on the gram only for another person on his flight to call him out leading to a whole bunch of other fake doing it big memes but for all those good ones th there still are the ones that are just kind of so so like man really you didn't even try for that rhyme. It's like 90% the same words. Oh, wow. What a miscommunication. No, not that type of gangbang, fellas. I meant we should have group sex. Oh, and you already killed all these people. Oh, nuts. You know, I, I take the blame for that one. What with the whole pre-existing gang affiliation you guys have and whatnot. That one's really on me for not clarifying. Then there's lines in both songs that just feel a little too direct about the person they're mentioning. Meek still be in my DMs, I be having a duckling. I used to pray for dogs like this. Face ass when I fuck them. Like, Meek and Nikki had actually dated and broken up by this point, so, so that just rings a little too personal there. Then of course there's this one. Like, damn, that, those lines were three times colder than anything these guys said to each other in their beef. That said, in the Biggie original, he makes mention of Mary J. Blige. With that being a reference to her first album and 90s slang for like, what's the info on what's up between you and me, you know, that sort of thing. And it feels especially pointed here because it comes back at the end of the verse as a callback to Mary being mentioned like half a verse earlier. However, it does come off as a lot more playful, what with them being label mates, but also pretty cool friends-wise. So it's like, hey, maybe they were just tight enough to joke like that. Especially considering what I'd found out is that, apparently, Biggie's now infamous Who Shot Ya was originally slated to be a rap interlude on Mary J. Blige's second album. But it got cut because it was too violent, which, yeah, that, that sounds like the right decision there. Like, Jesus, how jarring of a switch would it be for a Mary J. Blige album full of sad songs about abusive exes to suddenly be interrupted by an aggro rap verse about stalking someone with a gun? Oh, and uh, here's the part where all the people who don't know Biggie's Dream song very well heard that last part and thought, eh, well, yeah, that would be pretty awkward. You know, I can't imagine what would be more wildly inappropriate than that. And, uh, well, l let me say this part in Pig Latin so I don't get demonetized. Um, if you're particularly uncomfortable with the mention of Einer's may and actual say salt a uh, uh, maybe you skip a bit past this next part because a name that I'm certain you were not expecting gets brought up. Like, oh my god! Holy f shit, man, she was f nine at the time. Why would he say that? Like. Look, I, I get it, I get that he doesn't mean it, and he's just doing the 90s shock rap stick, but there's still context and timing you have to consider, man. I, I'm just saying, there's a hierarchy to all things, including shock rap lyrics. I like to call it the bizarre Eminem scale. See, you may know M for his shock rap lyrics, but who you may not know is Bizarre, his less talented label mate. See, as offensive as Eminem often is, his lyrics are still usually executed with wordplay and timing to catch you off guard with unexpected humor. However, his friend Bizarre, his material is, is pretty much just pure shock value, with no real point other than the offensiveness. Like, take a line like this. Hey, it's me, Versace, what? Somebody shot me, and I was just checking the mail. Which, sure, is still a super dark joke, but at the very least involved a play on words and a subversion of expectation relative to what the setup is. Contrast that with a bizarre lyric, where referencing a taboo, shocking thing in and of itself is just automatically supposed to be funny. Get it? A controversial thing happened with a celebrity and I reminded you of it. <laughs> I'll be taking my laughs, please. So for this Dreams joint, it's just so out of damn left field to have a song that just feels like it's mostly going to be a fun track about name-checking sexy R&B singers to do its sharp turn into a PDF file joke. And also, I, and I know this is like magnitudes less important than the fact that he brought up a nine-year-old at all, but it's this thing I still can't get over. Why is it a date? Like, am I really supposed to imagine Biggie taking a nine-year-old Raven's bone to a freaking cheesecake factory? You know what? I, I, I'd rather just stop imagining the scene altogether. Jesus, I feel like a bucket of squick juice is dropped on me every time I hear that line. Then again, the, the Nicki remake also has a bit of an uncomfortable reference in it as well. 
Oh man, speaking of celebrities, I do not want to hear the rapper talk about sex with because of the gross relationship with Einer's May. Oh, thank God. Okay, went with Kanye instead. Jesus, I can't believe there's a scenario where Kanye is the less controversial option, but here we are. But yeah, then the Nicki remix comes to a close. And then it starts back up again. You know I'm all about them talents. I've been supporting the scholars. I let them give me some bright, but he wanted me to ride it. With a different beat and a third verse that completely drops the concept. I ride it so in a circle. I touch a fawn in the circle. I go a bounce and a bounce and I'm a go down in slow motion. She also seems to drop the idea of rhyming at the end of the bars, but, but okay. Seriously, why is she doing this? Why tack on a superfluous final verse out of nowhere? And like, this isn't a separate song that she edited onto the video. This, this is how the full track on Spotify plays out. The best I can come up with is that maybe she's doing it out of a sense of, oh, well, I, I don't need to rely on this classic rap song to get props. I can still throw down dope lyrics without the concept. And you know, that'd be fine if she was getting in some super explicit sex rhymes as a coda to spice up the raunchiness, but no, the bars are about as middling and lukewarm as you would expect from her at this point. Half of this shit isn't even about sex, really. It's mostly generic brag rap lines that up in the mood of the first part of the track. Yes, repeating the same line. That's how you show the haters who think your music is uncreative and repetitive. Although overall, to rate them both, I I have to say, I'd give the Barbie Dreams a 3 out of 5. In the original, I'd have to give a 2 out of 5. And I know, I know. Scandal rocks the nation as self-proclaimed rap critic declares Nicki Minaj's song better than deceased artist whose music has been preordained as unquestionably perfect. But I'm sorry, a good portion of the original is just kind of basic sex rhymes that could have interchangeably been about any of the other R&B singers he mentions. Meanwhile, Nicki much more consistently makes jokes that genuinely connect to the artist she's talking about. Now, they don't all land well, and like I said, that tag on verse at the end really brings down the replayability value, but for the hits that do connect, they make the song an overall better presentation in my eyes. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like, because it helps. Comment if you have something to say, because it helps even more. And hit the subscribe and the bell afterwards, because that's what helps the most. Follow me on Twitch to check out my music and gaming streams. Follow my Twitter and Instagram to know when those streams are happening. And of course, support me on Patreon to join the RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. So check all that fun stuff out, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.